Have you ever felt like you're pouring your heart and soul into Instagram and getting nothing in return? I know I have and it can be really frustrating to put so much energy into a platform that's getting you nowhere. On the other hand, when I worked with Pinterest, I grew from 0 to 30,000 views per month. Over the last one year, I've spent a lot of time exploring Pinterest and I even took a detailed course to learn more about the platform and today I want to share my exact strategies that helped me grow my Pinterest page. Also, I did all of this as a complete newbie to the platform. So no matter where you are, even if you've never worked with Pinterest for your art business, you can definitely put these tactics into practice. Step one is to set up your profile for success. I know that sounds like something that's very obvious, but it's a step that should not be ignored, especially with Pinterest. Firstly, make sure that you sign up as a business account and not a personal account on the platform. Then the next step would be to claim your website or your websites if you have more. You can claim your Etsy site, your website, and you can also claim your YouTube accounts. This way you'll know when Pinterest is directing traffic to you. I have two different domains that I use for my business. So I claimed both of them on Pinterest. When you're setting up your profile, make sure you use a really attractive profile photo as well as a cover photo, both of which should help people get to know your brand a little better. You could of course use a logo, but I personally prefer using my own face as a cover photo because it feels a lot more personal and inviting. On the cover photo, I like to showcase my art so that when people come to my page, they know exactly what to expect from me. Step two would be to create boards that are aligned with your target audience. If you've ever worked with Pinterest, just personally browsing the site as a consumer, I'm sure you would have created boards for yourself. We create boards to save the different places we want to travel to. We create boards to save recipes we like and sometimes even uh, fashion or styling of outfits that we'd like to recreate. However, when you're using Pinterest for marketing, you really want to think of yourself as a business and behave accordingly. The first thing is that you need to really understand your target audience. It would be really good if you could spend some time brainstorming about who your target audience is. Who is it that your products or your services would attract? Who would be the perfect fit for your business? And then think about that person's life and lifestyle. Think about their pain points and how the content that you create is going to help them. I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what kind of content you can pin, but for now, just think about the different boards that you'd want to create. I'd recommend starting off with about five different boards where you would predominantly pin original content, that is content that you are creating for the platform. And you can have two or three other boards where you pin existing content, which is meant to showcase who you are and who your brand is. This is kind of similar to what we first spoke about, about pinning content about travel or fashion or the things that you're interested in. I'll show you my own Pinterest page as an example. My business focuses on a mix of things. One is creating the kind of content that helps artists um, like I'm doing right now, which could be related to the business and marketing side of art. But I also uh, have gouache courses that I offer. Um, so that's another segment of my audience that I attract. And I, of course, have my own art that I create, which I sell as originals, prints or products. So you could think about your own business in terms of what are your different offerings and maybe each of them have a different target audience that you want to attract and you can create your boards accordingly. So for example, I have one called gouache art for beginners, easy painting ideas. And this is where I pin anything to do with simple gouache tutorials that I put up on YouTube or also the courses that I create and offer to my audience. Then I have one called gouache art by Shivani Patel, which is of course meant to showcase all of the original art that I create. Again, these are all original pins that I'm pinning onto the platform. None of these are other people's pins that I am pinning. Now, when we look at the other kinds of things I mentioned, which is pinning existing content from the platform, again, I'm trying to be a little strategic about showcasing my brand 
and also attracting the right kind of audience. So if you know me at all, you know that bird art is predominantly what I do. Uh, you can see it on the wall behind me as well. So of course, I have a board for botanical and naturalist art inspiration. This serves as a place for me to gather my inspiration, but it also serves as a way for me to showcase to my audience that this is the kind of stuff that I am about and this is the kind of stuff that interests me. Similarly, I have an entire board where I just save images of birds, which I refer to from time to time for my art. I also have a board on surface pattern designing because that's something I'm interested in getting into. So again, this board serves as inspiration for me. And even here, you'll see that the kind of surface pattern designs that I'm pinning are very naturalist and botanical and bird inspired. So you'll see that my brand is playing through all of the different pins that I create or pin from other people's content. So any of your existing boards on your Pinterest page, which you've already created with say travel or um, recipes or whatever, or say you have one with cute dogs, if they aren't exactly aligned with your brand as such, I would recommend making those into secret boards. You can still use them for your own personal reference, but it would be best to keep your brand identity very consistent across the boards that are visible to public. The next step is that it's important for you to have somewhere to direct people to. On Pinterest, what's really important is that you start getting clicks that you are converting into leads or traffic for your business. So the ideal thing would be to have some sort of blog on your website where you are directing people to. That could be the source of the content that you're creating for Pinterest. You could even direct them to your YouTube page, for example, or you could even pin your Instagram posts onto Pinterest. But what's going to bring you the best results is if you're creating art or selling art prints, for example, you could pin images of the art and the prints that you offer from your website onto Pinterest so that anybody who clicks on it is being directed to your print listings and they could choose to purchase it. You could, of course, also direct to your Etsy page, which is something that I do. Initially, I didn't have blog posts on my website uh, for hosting all of my content. So I used to direct my pins directly to my YouTube channel. I would create pins corresponding to each of the videos that I created and I would direct people there. But now my process is that I convert each and every YouTube video into a blog post and then I create pins that direct people to my website. That way I'm keeping all of the traffic on my own site and if they'd like to, they can click from within my blog post and then go check out my YouTube video. I'll leave a link to one of my blog posts in the description below so that you can see that flow if you're interested in it. Once you've got all of this set up, the next step is consistency. On Pinterest, consistency is key and that's what's going to lead to your growth on the platform. When I started off, I was pinning one post every two days, after which I increased my frequency to one a day and currently I pin two posts a day. As I increased my frequency, I immediately saw my monthly views increasing and also the number of clicks going through onto my website. The next step is to get your keywords right. On Pinterest, keywords are really important. People are using Pinterest more like a search engine, so think of it that way. When people search for something related to what you create or what you offer, you want your posts to be discovered. For example, if you're somebody who does watercolor florals, in case somebody is searching for watercolor florals or looking for watercolor floral tutorials, you want your content to come up there. With keywords, prioritize quality over quantity. Do some research and use about one to two keywords per post. Craft simple titles and descriptions for each of your pins using these keywords. Also think about the copy that you want going onto your actual pin graphic. It's not just about the title and description, but also what's visible on the pin. Towards the end of the video, I'll give you some guidelines on keyword research, so stick around for that. The next step is the process of designing your pins. Using templates can be really helpful through this process and sites like Canva provide a lot of free templates that you could start off with. 
I also started by using these free templates on Canva and over time I got a graphic designer to design some templates specifically for my brand. Start simple, don't overthink the process. The main thing is to just get started. There are also plenty of sites where you could purchase some premium templates for your pins like Creative Market. And videos do really well on Pinterest as well. So you could create videos specifically for Pinterest or you could be really smart and repurpose the videos that you create for Reels or for YouTube Shorts onto Pinterest as well. Try to make the most of the content that you're anyway creating. Many times I also use my Instagram photos that I click and I just add them to some kind of template, add some text on it, and it's ready to be posted on Pinterest. So let's now talk about keywords. Based on what you create and what you're trying to sell, there could be some obvious keywords that come to mind. Like for example, mine would be gouache art for beginners because I create a lot of videos teaching people how to do just that. But a little bit more digging will help you get some more specific keywords that can be really helpful and can help you grow on the platform. An easy way to do this is to go to your own Pinterest home feed and use the search bar feature on Pinterest itself. Now, when I type the word gouache, for example, there are a few keyword ideas that come up like gouache painting, gouache art, just gouache, gouache illustrations, gouache portraits. These could a give me ideas for the type of content I could create and some of them might be stuff I could adapt into my existing content like gouache painting ideas for beginners. Now let's take it one step further. We want to know more about this because people might be searching for other keywords before the word gouache like easy gouache tutorials for example. So how do we dive deeper? Let's use an underscore which is a wild card and let's type beginner. Now this gives me a lot more ideas in terms of keywords. It says gouache art for beginners, beginner gouache painting, easy gouache paintings for beginners. All of these are really valuable keywords for me to take note of, which I could possibly use once I'm ready to pin my posts. Another way the search tool on Pinterest could be useful is if you use it for inspiration from other artists on how to craft your title and description. When I type watercolor art, for example, you see that there are a lot of accounts that are coming up that use this as a keyword in their name itself. Again, when you look at my page as well, I've not just put my name, I've also used naturalist gouache art, art and business educator. That way, if people are looking for gouache art, I'm quite sure that my name could also crop up. Then I also use it in the description because I'm also interested in color mixing. So I've made sure to include that keyword. And I also wanted to include the business side of art, which is why I've included this as well. Another place where it's important to use the right keywords is in your board descriptions. Again, these are things that can help your board or your pins come up when people are looking for specific keywords. Ever since I started implementing all of these strategies that I mentioned to you, I saw a lot of growth on the platform. And to be honest, most of this is very beginner friendly, very simple stuff that you can start doing from today. The goal is only to commit to it and to be consistent. To help you in your own Pinterest journey, I've put together all of these tips into a free workbook in the form of a PDF and you can download it via the link in the description. I'll continue to share my experiences with you as I explore Pinterest in more depth. Over this time when Instagram has been frustrating, another really helpful platform to market my business has been email marketing. If you're interested in knowing more about that, be sure to check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye.